Okay, welcome back. Um, it's 12 Sharp. Um, I'm really happy to see you all here. Um, this is the last track of DNOC 11. So please welcome Kosters. He is a site reliability engineer at Kentex, and he will tell us something about scaling thousands of BGP sessions in a SAS environment. Kosters. Hi, uh, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to talk on how we scaled BGP connections in our main product which is a software as a service network analytics platform. It's a cloud platform, basically. So I'm going to start with a small intro, just to see what the requirements for the service are. And then I'm going to walk you through the phases that we had, which are like four of them. Uh, so first of all, uh, what does the Kendic platform do? We basically ingest a lot of different sources with NetFlow being uh, the major one. And then we, ingest, then we aggregate them, calculate things out of them, and either store them so that customers can do queries on, on this data, or uh, do uh, trigger uh, alerts and then mitigations from this data. It's not very different from any flow open source solution you, you may have tested. So today we're going to talk about this one, uh, the BGP side. And for this, we ask customers basically to, to do BGP, BGP peerings from, with us. And we act as an iBGP route reflector. And we're totally passive. So we never initiate connections to the customers. And the reason for that is so that the customers are, uh, have the full flexibility to do peerings as they like. And what we ask customers is preferably to send us uh, routing tables from each device they're actually uh, sending flow from, if that device does BGP. And of course, that's not just to filter, uh, just to add BGP attributes into NetFlow. We do other stuff with it, from calculating other features out of it. For example, you can see how much of your traffic has RPKI invalids, or peering analytics, or if you have a multi-pop network, you can see which, which side your traffic gets in, which side it gets out from, and some network discovery. And we also use the BGP as a transport to push mitigations that are the result of alerting from the platform. So you can say that if this rule that detects DDoS attacks uh, triggers on that prefix, we can push a remote trigger black hole or a flow spec rule. So how all this started? We started back in 2015. We had initially less than 200 customer devices and peerings. And as all of this setup start, we had two nodes that were active backup. And they were sharing a floating IP managed by UCARP, which is an OpenBSD VRRP implementation. And all this was set up from a script in Slashroot that was run and boot via ETCRC local. Of course, as you can understand, this setup didn't go very far. So after almost uh, seven or eight months, we had more than 300 peers, and we couldn't fit them in one node anymore. So we had to do something to scale it out. And we also had to remove UCARP from the equation, because it was getting uh, we were hitting a lot of corner cases if we were trying to do more than two nodes in UCARP. And at the same time, we happened to uh, get our internal fabric upgraded to, uh, to a full 10G setup. And on top of this, we also have now OSPF and BGP in, built in the, into our internal fabric. So we decided to hit all of these issues with a new design. First of all, we replaced UCARP, because it was the one thing that we were, we were fearing the most at the time. So we replaced it with homegrown cell script, basically, 
that uh, communicates with a spawned XABGP speaker. We move the floating IP to, to the loopback interface and have this shell script to actually announce the, the, the floating IP as slash 32 to our fabric. Uh, it's a pretty common BGP setup. We just don't do any cast. But what we do is that we uh, publish a different med per host. So we have multiple routes to a host. And as soon as the host goes down, the IP gets to the next route. The, the next route gets selected from the fabric. And uh, so the traffic moves over. Uh, the next we had to do, of course, is to scale out the whole setup. So we started thinking what to do with that. And we started thinking, yeah, maybe all, all the peerings end up in one node that has the floating IP. But then some of them need to move out. So this node has to become a router. And then we think, how are we going to do that? We have to select some. So policy routing. And we start thinking of how to do the policy routing, what's going to be the policy. We try different setups, but none of it gives us a very uniform distribution. So we decide to go with the oldest trick in the book and do wildcard masks, uh, which I don't like, but it was the only one that was, doing, that was giving us a uniform distribution at the point. So basically, carve the IP space out into how many nodes we want and start to route, policy route these connections to these nodes. So basically we have this now. Uh, at this point, uh, customer device one gets to the IP that's announced by the BGP fabric, goes to the BGP node two that has active this IP and gets forwarded to BGP node one. And the purple one does the same, but gets forwarded to BGP node 3, according to our policy. Uh, we had some issues, though. We can find an IPv6 mask to do a uniform enough distribution for, uh, uh, for wildcards. And the reason is that people do all kinds of smart things with their networks in IPv6. And so we couldn't find a wildcard wild mask that would be uniform enough, and we wouldn't end up having thousands of IP tables rules. So for now, we, we let IPv6 remain as an active, in an active backup setup. And the other major issue we have is that for any uh, topology alteration we need to do, like, for example, change the meds, that the IP gets announced with, we have to restart the full XABGP speaker. So we have basically an outage, and it has to happen in a maintenance window. So we're starting to uh, think what we're going to do. Thankfully, this setup got us to grow for another 1,000 peers. And we, we're now passing 1,300 peers. And IPv6 doesn't fit in one node anymore, which is good. Uh, on top of that, mask-based balancing is not very optimal anymore because we're getting some bigger customers that may have like 100 devices in one slash 24. So these end up in, in the same node. And we decide we have to do that, something better than masks, than just trying to find the best mask uh, configuration. And as I said, we have various shortcomings with BGP VIPs, and with the biggest one being that we need to restart the whole setup to just announce a new IP or alter the meds. Uh, the issue is that though that we grow very fast at this point, so we have 1,300 peers, and uh, we're, 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 ha we're going to have uh, 1,400 by next week or something. So we need to do something that's going to be incremental and not a full design that would take a lot of time. So, sorry. so we decided to improve our current setup. And we keep policy routing. 
routing tables, routing rules, this all work. But we replace mask-based routing with a cousin of it that's hash-based routing. So we basically use the HMARC module of NetFilter, which given that what it does is actually that it takes the source IP or whatever is in HMARC table and hashes it with uh, a seed that's in HMARC round and gives out a hash that gets distributed into the number of buckets you, you have. So we have a, a bucket per host, and these IPs get distributed into these buckets. And the great thing about it is that because they're hashes and they have quite big entropy, uh, the distribution is guaranteed to be uniform. So that's our actual setup right now. So we've, we've fixed the mask-based routing, and then we have to fix BGP VIPs. So we replace it with a real daemon in Python that runs as part of uh, the XABGP. And the major changes with this daemon is basically that on boot, it, it assigns random edge. So we have an eventually consistent setup even if everything, uh, even if everything reboots. But it also offers the ability through a socket to do runtime changes to the XABGP. So the next, uh, the next thing there, now we have the ability to dynamically modify what, get, what gets announced into our fabric. So the next thing we do is to create a side daemon that's called VPHealth that basically runs health checks to our equipment. And does automatic things with, with our meds, for example, uh, debugging. Like announcing or withdrawing routes. So the setup is the same, but we still have a major issue. Uh, we're happy with it, but we have a major issue, which is if we remove a node because this node needs to be, I don't know, uh, repurposed or removed because it has a hardware fault, or we need to add a new node because we are now scaling horizontally, uh, all hashes have to be redistributed, which means all connections have to be re redistributed to the new cluster, which means all of our BGP connections flap. So we still need to do maintenance to just replace a memory dim that broke or to add a new node. So that, that's our major issue right now. That's our current setup. And we started designing the new setup that we, where the main goal is to actually have something that's more elastic on expansion, on horizontal expansion. So now we've grown much more. Now we have more than 4,000 IP, 4,000 BGP connections with customers. And we can't flap them all just to change a memory dim in one node or to add a node. That's something that should be transpired to the customer. So we start designing the whole setup from scratch. Uh, the first and major point is that it's, it's going to have IPv4 and IPv6 support natively and equally. Uh, it's, it has to offer uniform session distribution again because our nodes are identical. So it doesn't make sense some of them to get uh, double the traffic than the others do. It has to allow us to do horizontal scaling. Uh, because we, you, we grow, so we need to add nodes. And the two major goals for the new setup is that we need to persist our state now. So we're not going to do that many dynamic stuff, but we need to have a state persisted in our code tree and make sure that that's the running state, that's the safe state, and that's it. And of course, we need to have easier day-to-day -day operations. So uh, adding a node, removing a node, uh, rebooting a node, or de even deploying a different code, different code in one node, should be uh, things that should be uh, transparent to the customer. 
and ideally the customer shouldn't get any notifications about this because uh, these are uh, outside of their uh, uh, use. So uh, we're seeing very, uh, we're seeing a lot of setups, but we're trying a lot in our lab, and we end up implementing an LVS, Linux Virtual Server, direct server return setup, which basically works as in a customer uh, initiates a connection. This connection gets to uh, the BGP, uh, the floating IP that gets announced to the BGP fabric, ends up in a load balancer node that doesn't run our BGP code. This load balancer node uh, rewrites the source MAC of the packet and with its own and forwards the packet to the real server that's running our BGP code. And the real server terminates the connection directly to the customer. So we're not passing both sides of the connection through the LB node. It's a setup that traditionally is used for websites because the response is bigger than uh, the request. Uh, but we find it good enough for us to be able to scale horizontally. So under Hood, we, we're, gonna we're using BERT instead of XABGP. We're throwing away all of our custom code and doing, a BERT, uh, doing BERT instances with uh, regular expression conditionals and all these nice things, and BFD on top of that for quick failovers. And we're, gonna we're using Keep Alive D in LVS mode to do the whole source routing uh, coordination. And then the LB nodes are also going to sync their connection state. And that's because when a load balancer node fails and the other one assumes the traffic, all TCP connections get reset, right? So with, uh, with IPVS, we sync through the, through the pink link here. We sync, uh, we sync both. Uh, connection tracking tables, so that TCP connections won't get reset. And so with this, we achieved having protection on, uh, with a load balancer node flapping, which otherwise would flap all of our connections. And with, uh, with the whole setup, the real we're protected against real servers flapping and getting the whole thing down with them. So a real server flapping now will only get down uh, just the connections that land in this node, which, which is good enough. And the whole configuration is set in Puppet that's also tracked through Git, so we can follow any changes anyone does into the whole configuration. And on top of that, the whole setup now supports dynamic reloads because every, everything in this list supports dynamic reloading. So we now can boost changes without, basically without maintenance. So yeah, pros and cons, basically now we have uh, online configuration changes, everything is persisted. We can depool or pull new nodes and they're gonna get the new, if, if, if we, get a new node in, it's just going to get the new connections. So no, uh, the connections that are there will not get affected in any way. Uh, we have a lot of health check flexibility due to, uh, due to BERT and uh, Keep Alive being mature products with a lot of uh, work around uh, health checks. Like we have scores and stuff like that. So you can do multiple health checks per, per service. Uh, the issue is that we don't have consistent hashing anymore, which means that if a connection gets reset because uh, a customer performed the maintenance, it probably will end up in another node, which is like the least, uh, the least loaded node at the moment. So we need to 
find where its connection lands in. And we're building tooling to, to be able to do that in a, in a better way, because now we have to check logs. And we can't scale, the major issue is that we can't scale out of one LAN because we do source mockery routing. So we need DARP. So we can't scale out of one LAN. But we're good for now. We have enough space. Uh, but when we get to that point, probably we'll have to design a new setup. And the other issue that we have one node uh, that all, uh, all the BGP requests go through. And we, so we try to not to be that worried with it because of IPVS, but that's also something that we need to yet uh, improve it in the future as well. So this setup is now working in our lab. And we're starting testing and tuning it because it's ha it has a multitude of knobs that we can uh, change. So we're trying to emulate the whole setup. We found a tool from Spotify that we're trying to use. If someone's from Spotify here, it's a great tool. Thanks. And, but if you have any other ideas, I'm, I would be glad to hear or recommendations on how we could emulate all of our BGP load into uh, the lab and then into parallel pr production system, staging. And yeah, we found a lot of tuning knobs and possibly there are more uh, that we, we expect to find even more during the testing, especially with IPv4, IPv6, uh, all the timers and all that and the health checks. Uh, so yeah, that's all. I was fast, I think, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, thanks for having me.